So the next topic I'm going to talk about is the Visual Auditory Kinesthetic Learning Styles Theory, which is a very popular belief, but the evidence behind it is questionable. So the VAC Learning Styles Theory claims that all of us fall into one and only one of these three learning styles categories. Visual learners learn through seeing, think in pictures, and learn through viewing and creating images. Auditory learners learn through listening, think in words, and learn best from lectures. Kinesthetic learners learn through touching and doing, they express themselves through movement, and they learn best through physically interacting with their environment. And the VAC Learning Styles Theory proposes that these are fixed traits. These are just traits that we are born with. We can't change them. We're stuck with them. So what they propose is that teachers should find out the learning styles of all of their students and then tailor their lessons specifically to match those students' learning styles. Now, despite how widely believed and accepted without question this theory often is, in the field of educational psychology, it's, it's controversial at best. There's a lot of criticism about this learning styles theory. Now, no one is really arguing about our preferences. People do have preferences for either pictures or words or some people have more of a need to move than others. Our preferences are real and, and educational psychologists aren't really arguing about that. Where the controversy lies is that there really isn't good solid evidence to support the idea that catering instruction to people's learning styles or learning preferences really helps them learn. There have been some very well-designed, carefully controlled experimental studies where they tested the learning styles, of the, the reported learning styles of the participants, and then they had one group where the lesson was geared toward their learning style and another group where it wasn't. And they tried to measure statistically whether people in one group performed better, learned better, performed better on a test than the other. And in these kinds of studies, they failed to show any significant effects of tailoring a lesson to the person's learning style. And a bigger problem with the idea of learning styles is that there are so many other considerations that are really important when you're deciding how to present material. The nature of the subject matter is, is a big one. Think about, think about geography. Um, if someone's trying to learn how to read maps, but they say they're not a visual learner, does that mean that the teacher should translate the maps into words for them? Or does it mean that they should stretch and improve their skill and get better at reading maps, get better at dealing with that visual information? Now, the learning styles theory would say, if you're not a visual learner, then the teacher should find a way to make map reading more accessible in some matter, manner other than visually. But really the nature of the subject matter is very important in deciding how to best present a lesson. Also prior knowledge of learners has been shown to affect what kinds of techniques and presentations work best. Sometimes advanced learners need a different type of, of presentation than novice learners regardless of what their preferences are. And then, of course, we're all individuals, and we don't all fall neatly into three buckets. We're all different, and teachers really need to try to be adaptive to their students as individuals and not as three categories. So Cofield et al. did a very extensive review of the literature on learning styles and came to the conclusion shown in this quote, decisions about the forms in which meaning is represented 
are probably best made with all learners and the nature of the subject matter in mind, rather than trying to devise methods to suit vaguely expressed individual preferences.